Hello and welcome to the 48th tutorial in the Bootstrap 3 series. In this part, we're going to be looking at aligning pager links. We'll be using the source code from the 47th tutorial. If you don't have it, don't worry, there'll be a link in the description. We have a pager set up. Bootstrap provides us a way to align links to the edge of its parent container, sort of like how blogs put previous and next buttons at the bottom of a page, because by default, pager puts it in the middle of its container. But using align links feature, you can put it to the left and put it to the right. Bootstrap, like everything else, makes it super easy to implement. It's, it's not even going to take a minute. It's, it's really that simple. That's what I love about Bootstrap. It does so much for you. And it's cross-browser compatible and so forth and so forth. So if we scroll in, what we're going to do is add a class. And this is going to be previous going to add another class and this is going to be next this is all built in we don't need to do anything we don't we're not going to code any CSS or anything like that now if we run this in our web browser try to open the font folder if you have a look it's now aligned to the left and the right of its parent container so if I resize it resizes accordingly which which looks really good it looks good on a mobile device and it looks good on a big desktop display as well Try as an extra task putting these within the rows and the columns, aka these right here, and see how they react. But we're going to go a little step further before we end this tutorial. Because they look pretty good as they are, they're aligned. But what we're going to do is add another cool thing that Bootstrap provides, and that basically is arrows. It's just to visually convey to the user what it's about, what's happening, whether it's they're reading in English or whether they're just looking at the arrows. You'll see in a second what we mean. So if you just put span area hidden and put this to true. Close off the span tag. And in here, all we're going to do is put ampersand L-A-R-R -R, semicolon. And then what we can do is copy and paste this. I'm going to copy and paste it here. If we scroll over, all we're going to change is this L, which is basically left here, and this to an R, which is right. So if we just save this, now if we go back to our web browser, and if we refresh and scroll down, as you can see, there are now arrows. That's my mistake. Actually, let me show you what my mistake is. If you look, we got the previous arrow and the next arrow. But the previous arrow looks good because it's on the left side, that's the general convention. And the general convention for the next arrow is for it to be on the right side. And that is just my mistake. What I've done is put this span before the text. You just put it after, that's all you've got to do. So if I just put it there, save it, open up the web browser, refresh. As you can see, it's looking great now, and as is the previous button as it was before. In the next part of this series, we're going to cover disabled items within pages. If you have any questions, feel free to message us at support at sonarsystems.co.uk. All the required source code will be in the description. To see hundreds of more videos like this one completely free, visit sonarlearning.co.uk. And as usual, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.